tonight. The Stig drives some very fast farm equipment, I hail a taxi, and finishing with something that I'm reliably informed is a bit of a fan favourite around here. I'm Chris Harris, and this is the Top Gear Horizon Special. Ah yes, the Stig, our very own UFO, unidentified fast object, the world's least obedient racing driver. Right then, the Lotus Elise, a 90s classic based on the age-old Roadster recipe. Two seats, engine in the middle, rear-wheel drive, not an ounce of fat. This is what driving is all about. But this isn't just any Elise, it's a Sport 190, a tuned up, stripped out Elise for track days. Even the passenger seat is an optional extra. But who needs friends anyway? Friends are expensive and heavy. All right, it's not the fastest way around a corner, but it's definitely the most entertaining. It weighs well under 700 kilos and makes 190 horsepower from its 1.8 litre engine, which revs to 8,000 RPM. Just listen to that. And of course, because it's a Lotus, it sticks to the famous philosophy of the man who founded the company, Colin Chapman. Simplify, then add lightness, he said. The Sport 190 also adds a full roll cage, just in case. Made it! Was there ever any doubt? The Series 1 Elise is, after all, one of the best handling cars ever made. The Sport 190 is its hardcore cousin, a road-going racer you can drive to work and across fields, it turns out. But if it's true agricultural transport you're after, we have just the thing. I'm Chris Harris, and this is the Top Gear Horizon Special. Ah yes, the Stig, our very own UFO, unidentified fast object, the world's least obedient racing driver. Hang on a minute, what on earth is the Stig up to? Serious slide there. Loving your work, Stiggy. You've got it. The trick with drifting is to not actually spin, but to almost spin for as long as possible. Well, 
They did say to use the fastest route possible, and if there's one thing faster than a racing line, it's a straight line. If you've got to hand it to the stick. Made it! Was there ever any doubt? The Series 1 Elise is, after all, one of the best handling cars ever made. The Sport 190 is its hardcore cousin, a road-going racer you can drive to work and across fields, it turns out. But if it's true agricultural transport you're after, we have just the thing. Oh, a BMW 1M. Great car. Hang on, that's my BMW 1M. Seriously, not funny. Who gave Stick the keys? Just cleaned it. Now it's going to smell of onions. Odor stick. Does 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. My 1M. Stig's way beyond that now. 3 litre straight six, 335 horsepower, two turbos, and as much sideways action as you like. the last time we leave Stig unattended. Am I the only one who remembers Budapest? It's electronically restrained to 155 miles an hour, but it could definitely go quicker. Well, this isn't stressful to watch. Not at all. 400 yards. Turn left. Turn left. Look at the smoke! Please leave me some tread for the drive home, Stiggy. Seriously, come on! Best BMW's ever made this, born to be driven by me. Got to admit though, Stig does kind of suit it. At the roundabout, take the second exit. It's a BMW, so of course it's rear-wheel drive. 50-50 weight distribution too. It's a natural-born drifter. getting into that. Just park it up now, Stig, and uh, mind the curbs. Now, anyone else want to go? No? Don't say I didn't ask. Right. Back to the actual script now, if you don't mind. This is Top Gear's track tour. It's a tractor, obviously, but with a 5.7-litre Chevy V8 making 500 horsepower. And here comes the Stig again. Farm Stig. Born in a barn, they say. Weaned by pigs. Can plough a field in under six seconds. There's a speed camera on the M68. Rumour has it, it only flashes above 87.2 miles an hour. Our tractor has been officially clocked at 87.2 miles an hour, making it the world's fastest tractor. But I reckon it will go even faster.
Steady on, Stig. Those are 54-inch mud tyres, remember? They get a bit squishy through the corners. Nobody needs to get the harvest in that quickly. Right, here comes the speed camera. Hope they've put some film in it. Whoa! Have you ever seen anything like it? That's a new tractor speed record and some impressively fast farming. If you want to spread slurry in a hurry, you know what you need. Now, though, it's time to hail a ride in something completely different. I called a cab earlier. Local company, Aisha's Taxis. Excellent service. Got me here in no time. Unsurprising, really. I mean, look at what turned up. Hands down, the quickest cab I've ever been in. Which got me thinking, how fast could this thing actually go? So I had a word with Aisha. Asked if we could borrow her cab for a trip to the seaside. To Bamborough Beach, in fact, where we could stretch the taxi's legs a bit. Although, I might have forgotten to tell her who'd be driving. You've guessed it, the cabbie will always get you to your destination very early, but probably won't be anywhere near where you asked to go. Oh, I see, the Stig's warming up the tyres. A good old-fashioned rolling burnout. We ordered some spare rubber, right? Now that's what I call a cab. No clattery diesel engine here. This has a V12 with over 750 horsepower, plus bucket seats. Beaded bucket seats, presumably. From now on, I say all cabs should have wide bodies and flared arches. Think about it. More stability, more speed, more downforce, more room for your terrified passengers. In 400 yards, turn right. It even has slick tyres for maximum grip on a bone-dried drag strip. So they should be interesting when we hit the beach. A drift is a delicate balance of throttle, steering and shouting. In 200 yards, turn left. Turn left. In 400 yards, turn left. Turn left. In 400 yards, turn right. Turn right. Turn left. Good work from the stick there. I'd say we're nicely warmed up for the next bit. So here we are then. In the old days, daredevils used smooth, sandy beaches like this to see how fast their cars could go. Many early land speed records were set on beaches. Miles of space, Nothing to hit. Sounds easy, right? Oh, look at that! Laying some pretty squirmy tracks there, Stiggy. That's what happens with 750 horsepower on sand. 
But that's the challenge here. Go as fast as possible all the way to the top of the beach. The thing is, there's something I haven't told the stick. Record rules say you must do two runs, one in each direction before the clock runs out. Which means, Stiggy, pulling off the world's swiftest U-turn. Which, of course, is when the handbrake comes in handy. Five-star ride from the Stig there. Mini cab, maximum speed. Next time I need a ride to the airport, I know who I'm calling. And all of this off-road action has given me an idea. This is Project EAT. That's EAT for E-Class All-Terrain. It's a modified Merc built by the Top Gear magazine team for finding bears in the woods. Not many bears around here, though. Mostly badgers. Still, there's definitely some terrain. Lots of it. All you need is a good sense of direction. Or not. Here's Stig again, looking lost. Terrified of maps, apparently. Inner compass points directly south. The EAT has a silky smooth V6 diesel. It'll do 155 miles an hour on the road, but where we're going, we won't need roads. First up, it's a trip to the top of Glen Rannoch, by any means necessary, and against the clock, naturally. But don't worry, it has knobbly tyres, and a roof rack for carrying extra knobbly tyres. In 400 yards, turn left. Turn left. It's a four-wheel drive car on mud tyres completely sideways. You'd do well in rallying with skills like that. Top draw drifting, I reckon. Who says you need an SUV to go off-road? The EAT has four-wheel drive and air suspension to smooth out lumps and bumps and everyday obstacles. Ancient burial mounds, for example. Well, it is a Mercedes wagon, so it's tough. And if you really want to smash stuff up, there's even a pickaxe in the back. That's some proper hang time. Actual air suspension. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Recalculating route. Four hundred yards. Turn right. Watch out here. I bet nobody checked the train timetable. Does anybody check train timetables anymore? It also has 340 horsepower, more torque than a cruise ship, and gets to 60 miles an hour in just over five seconds. time to head way over there, to the very top of Arthur's seat. But first, what goes up must come down. Turn around when it is safe to do so. yards. Turn left. Turn left. It's 
full of home comforts, the EAT. Charges for almost anything you can charge. Cozy ambient lighting, even a portable espresso machine. Everything the intrepid explorer can ever need. Turn around when it is safe to do so. At the roundabout, take the first exit. All right, all this adventure kits had a tiny effect on the fuel efficiency. Good job the roof rack holds two cans of diesel, and there's another one in the back. Just don't confuse them with your drinking water. Oh, nice drive! Right down the middle of the fairway. At the roundabout, take the first exit. On to the final stretch now. Just the small matter of getting up Arthur's seat. The clock's ticking, so better step on it, Stiggy. In 200 yards, turn left. Turn left. we go. The top of Arthur's seat. No idea who Arthur is, by the way, or why his seat's so big. Nice view, though. Shame there's no time to stick around. Now, I said we'd be driving some British classics, and you don't get more British than a car built in Birmingham designed by a man from... Greece. Anyway, here it is, an original Mini Cooper S, an icon of 60s engineering. It was designed for cities, but this is the wide-body one, so we're going to need a bit more... room. And I know just the place. Ready, Stick? The Mini is cleverly packaged, capable of carrying four people and their luggage. Hand luggage, presumably. Cooper S was the car to beat on the famous Monte Carlo rally. It pretty much wiped the floor with the competition. At the roundabout, take the third exit. The Cooper S was developed by a bloke called John Cooper, who also built F1 cars, so it had real racing pedigree. And it wasn't just Monte Carlo either. The British Saloon Car Championship, the Thousand Lakes Rally, even the Australian Touring Car Championship. Almost any time the Mini turned up, it won. Turn left. 400 yards, turn right. Turn right. Turn left. And here we are. Told you it was spacious.
We've got everything we need here. An airfield, the original rapid runabout, and the Stig. I'm looking forward to this. Look at that! Laying down some rubber there. Not that it has much to lay. After all, tiny wheels mean tiny tyres. It might be mini on the outside, but it's maxi on the inside. Want to guess the world record for the most people crammed inside one? I'll tell you, it's 27. Gymnasts. No idea if they all came out in one piece. See, the mini wasn't just designed for nipping around town. It was also a proper racer and won the British Saloon Car Championship a whopping five times. No wonder it was pretty much unbeatable. Maybe that's why its basic design lasted for over 40 years. They sold nearly five and a half million minis. But only this one could fly, apparently. Someone tell the Stig we're done now. It's time for a spot of sightseeing. Here we are then, Edinburgh where it's time for a spot of turbocharged tourism with this, the mighty Porsche GT2 RS. All we need now is our tour guide. Muck Stig, the world's worst Scotsman, allergic to tartan, absolutely petrified of bagpipes, or so I've heard. Right, let's see if we can visit every bell tower in Edinburgh and get back here before they all stop ringing. 400 yards, turn left. Left. What a car this is. 3.8 litre flat six, two turbo, 700 horsepower, all wrapped up in carbon fibre with wings, stripes, holes, and vents for snorting in the air. At the roundabout, take the first exit. Nippy little thing, isn't it? Zero to 60 takes 2.7 seconds. Just the job for a bit of speedy sightseeing. Yards, turn right. Ooh, inch perfect there. It's wider than a regular 911, this GT2, and about 20 times more terrifying. Basically, the perfect device for nipping in and out of city traffic. It might be street legal, but it's only a pair of firebrief underpants away from being a full blown racing car. Take the second exit. 
It's a real masterpiece of engineering, this GT2 RS. The wheels are made from magnesium, the exhaust is titanium. It's exotic, savage and utterly bonkers. I love it! 200 yards. Turn sharp right. Turn sharp right. It's limited to 211 miles an hour, any faster, and it would need special tyres. But with the stick behind the wheel, who knows? yards turn right at the roundabout take the first exit into the final stretch now note to stick remember to park properly at the end and watch out for traffic wardens Work. Hard on those carbon ceramic brakes now. They can stop a locomotive dead in its tracks. I told you we'd finish with a fan's favourite, and here it is. No, not the lorry. The thing on the back, under the tarp. You'll love it. But first we need to move it into position. Thankfully, we have our very own haulage expert. A trucker's trucker. No load too large. Yes, it's Big Rig Stig. Right, now take it easy, Stig. That's some expensive cargo you have back there. It costs as much as a house. and weighs about the same, too. Worked out what it is yet? Okay, here are some cryptic clues. It's all-wheel drive, but not four-wheel drive. It's a wagon, but you definitely don't need a horse to pull it. Hmm. In 200 yards, turn left. Turn left. Five tons of flatbed carrying four tons on its back. Don't you just hate getting stuck behind a slow, lumbering old... Wait a minute. It's actually accelerating. Up a hill. I guess that's what 900 foot-pounds of torque does for you. That plus trucker stig.
Almost there. Just park it up and we'll whip those covers off. Good job, Big Rig Stig. Suits you, you know. Although, come to think of it, maybe pick up some more your style. Especially the one we have in store. Turn around. I give you the Mercedes G63 AMG 6x6. It's the ultimate off-roader, a four-ton, six-wheel sports utility truck. Basically, a G-Wagon with the back half of a pickup thrown in for free. Up front is a 5.5-litre twin-turbo V8. Usually, it's limited to 100 miles an hour, but not this one. Turn right. Someone call air traffic control. I'm pretty sure you need a special license to fly one of these. With all of the wheels comes all of the grip. The 6x6 turns mountains into motorways. Is there anything it can't conquer? In 100 yards, turn left. In 100 yards, turn right. In 200 yards, turn right. Turn right. It makes 536 horsepower and more than 760 newton meters of torque. With that speed limiter removed and with the stick behind the wheel, it'll do 125 miles an hour with a bit of a run up. It's tough, the 6x6. After all, it was originally made for the Australian Army. It's basically a tank with heated seats. In 200 yards, turn left. It can wade through a metre of water, this thing. Most cars need full scuba kit at that depth. Ridiculous. In 200 yards, turn left. Turn left. Job there, Stig. Take tomorrow off. No idea what Stig does with a day off. Experimental dance, goat yoga, bog snorkeling. Anyway, I've been Chris Harris, and I still am. And this has been the Top Gear Horizon Special. Thanks for coming. Now, let's go see what this Fort Sathon Live thing's all about. <laughs>